Hi, welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing circles as conics. A circle is a set of all points that are equidistant from the center of the circle. Here we have a center point marked in red and a blue point that is at the end of a radius length. The black line is the radius length. We're going to take the radius length and turn it around. And as we do so, the point at the end is going to form the circle. So our circle has many dots on the edge of the circle that are all the same distance away from the center of the circle. Since all of the radii have the same length, the equation for a circle can be found by using the distance formula because we're looking for any points that are the same distance away from that center point. Let's start with a circle that has a center at 0, 0. We've drawn a point x, y on the circle. And that could be any point that is on the circle. And our radius length is r. So starting with our distance formula, we're going to replace d with r and plug in the endpoints of our radius. So we have x, y as one endpoint, and 0, 0 as the other. So we get an equation for the circle as r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then we're just going to square both sides of that equation. So we get r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So this is the general equation for a circle that has a center at 0, 0. Let's suppose that we had a circle whose center was not at the origin, but at hk. Then we're going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to replace d with r in our distance formula, and the endpoints of our radius in for the x values and y values. So we get r equals the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And then again, all we did was square both sides. And here we have an equation for a circle where hk is the center and r is the radius length. Now what I like to do is to set this equal to 1 and put it in what I call a conic form. So we're dividing both um, the x values and the y values by r squared. Now let's take that format and write an equation for a circle that has a radius of 6 and a center at negative 4, 1. Keep in mind that for the h value we're plugging in negative 4 and for the k value we're plugging in 1. For r we're plugging in 6. So let's simplify just a little bit for our denominators. This gives us an equation of that circle. There is another equation for the circle that we want to discuss. And that's when we're setting it equal to 0 and clearing out all our fractions. So let's start by clearing fractions, multiplying everything by 36. Then I've also foiled the numerators. So x plus 4 squared gives us x squared plus 8x plus 16. And the y minus 1 squared gave us y squared minus 2y plus 1. Then we want to set it equal to 0 and combine all our constants. And what I also did was reordered. So I have x squared plus y squared first, then my x, and then y value, and then the constant last. This is a form of a conic, and it can be used for any of the conics. For circles, the a and the c value, the coefficients of x squared and y squared, must be equal in order for it to be a circle. So look for that when you see an equation so you can decide whether it's a circle before you start working with it. Okay, let's work on drawing circles. In this case, we have an equation for a circle given to us. The first thing that you want to do is identify the center of the circle. So remember, that's h and k. In this case, that's going to be 5 and negative 2. Remember, the original form of the equation had x minus h and y minus k. So change the signs of the values that are given in the equation. Then you want to use your radius length to find four points in the circle. In this case, our radius length is 2. So we're going to add and subtract 2 from the x values first, and then from the y values next. So we're going to be 2 units away from the center. So moving 2 units um, horizontally, we're going to add 2 to the 5, and we get 7, negative 2. Going in the other direction, we end up with 3, negative 2. Then going up and down, uh, we have uh, 5, 0, and 5, negative 4. Now that you've found your four points and your center of the circle, what you want to do is plot them and then connect the four points with the circle.
with a circle drawn. So you see that we have um, this circle. And what you should notice is that the points that we found are lying on the horizontal and vertical lines of symmetry for the circle. It makes it really easy for us to graph. Remember that any points in the circle will be satisfying the equation for the circle, but these are four that are easy for us to find. Okay, let's go ahead and rewrite this one in the, the standard form where we're um, clearing out our fractions and setting it equal to zero. So we foiled out the x minus 5 squared and the y plus 2 squared, and we multiplied through by 4 to clear fractions. And now you want to set it equal to zero. So you have this equation. And notice again that our a and c values are equal and they're 1. Now you may want to check to see if you simplified this correctly. So um, you might want to take one of your ordered pairs and plug it into the equation just to check it. So let's try 5, negative 4. Replacing x with 5 and y with negative 4, and then simplifying. Well, we have a 25 at the beginning, a 25 at the end, and a negative 50 in the middle. So those three constants will cancel each other. And of course, the 16s are opposite signs, so they're going to cancel each other. So it looks like we did this one correctly. You might want to check the other points as well. Now, of course, if you just want to check the equation, you might want to go um, back up to the original equation that was given to us and plug your ordered pairs in there to make sure that you got the right ordered pairs. That would help as well, and it's a little easier to work with. Okay, let's find the center and length of the radius of a circle given below. Notice that this is not in the format that we need to identify the center of the circle or the radius length. So what we have to do is complete the square so we're going to group together our x terms and our y terms. And what we want to do then is find a number that we're going to put in this blank that makes these three terms a perfect square so that we can factor them. And then we're going to do the same thing with the y values. Notice I also brought this 9 over to the other side here. And of course, whatever I put into this blank on the right side, I have to put into the blank on the left side to balance the equation. So when you're completing this square, you want to take half of the coefficient of x and square it. For the x terms, that number is 6. So we want to take half of 6 and square it, and that's going to give us 9 that we're going to put here. Then we're going to do the same thing for the negative 10. So we have half of negative 10 squared is going to give us positive 25. So we add the 9 and the 25 to both sides of the equation. Now we're going to factor and combine our constants. So on the left side we got 25. The x squared plus 6x plus 9 factored into x plus 3 all squared. And the y values, the y squared minus 10y plus 25, came out to y minus 5 all squared. And now I'm just going to rewrite that in the conic form, so I'm setting it equal to 1. Either form is acceptable. And now you want to identify the center and the radius length. So remember your center was hk. In this case we're going to have negative 3, 5. And our radius squared is in the denominator, so it's going to be r equals 5 for our radius. Now we want to graph the circle, now that we know where our center and um, radius length is. So we're starting off at our center point, and then we're going to move 5 units left, right, up, and down from that center point. And we get our circle. Now that you've drawn your circle, you may be asked to give the domain and the range. Remember the domain are, is the point that's furthest to the left all the way to the point that's furthest to the right on your graph. So that's going to be from negative 8 to 2. And your range is from your lowest to your highest point, so that's going from 0 to 10. Now these endpoints are included, so we squared off our brackets to show that. Um, so make sure that you use the right notation on your domain and range. Okay, thank you for tuning in and contact me if you have any questions.